Hello, this is Julie Kay with a tutorial on how to make and decorate teapot embellishments. I've been asked by a few of my viewers or subscribers to show them how I decorate my little teapots embellishments that I make. So today I'll be doing kind of a little quick tutorial on how I make them. And then also I'll go over um, some ideas on how to decorate them. And so again, here's the little teapots that I, that I make and decorate. Um, Here's one that I already have packaged up. So there's different ideas on how to decorate them. So um, stick with me here and we'll start decorating and creating some teapots. The first thing that you need to do is find yourself a teapot die. Um, I am going to be using this one that I purchased from Diamond Dies. It's the smaller one. They do have two available. Um, on their page but again it's the smaller one it's you know roughly about two and two and a half inches by two I would I would say um, but again if you guys have crickets or silhouette machines or those type of things make sure you go through your cartridges um, and cut files just to see what you have available because you might have a teapot available and I do believe that there are also other companies out there that sell um, teapot dies. Um, there probably might possibly even be some punches out there. I'm not sure. So um, just look through your stash before you go out and buy anything just to see if you currently have anything that would work. Besides this, you do need paper. And so for today, I will be using some paper from the Julie Nutting French Flea Market um, paper collection. And then you will also be needing some sort of chipboard. You can also use like cereal boxes, cracker boxes, anything like that also for your bases of these teapots. Um, you don't have to go necessarily go out and buy chipboard. Um, I already went ahead and I cut out, <clears throat> cut out a whole bunch of little teacup or teapot, teapots out of the paper and out of the chipboard. So the first thing you're gonna do is pick two coordinating colors. So here I picked two, two, two blues. And I'm also going to grab two of the chipboard pieces also. And a scissors. So the first step that you're going to do is you're going to cut off the cover. And I'm just going to cut just straight across right there. So I just cut off the top of the teapot. And what I like to do um, just to make sure that they line up correctly is I will take my second teapot and just line that up and then I will cut in the exact same spot so now I have two bottoms and two tops I still have my chipboard pieces and then I like to ink my my paper teapot so I'm just going to use um, this is the color I have that match pretty close and it's a Stampin' Up! one but use what you have if you like more of the vintage look you could go with like a dark um, distress like vintage photo color if you like um, your edges to look more vintage that would be would be good but whatever matches your paper and I just go around and ink the edges and I'm just using a makeup sponge you can of course use if you have some of the the foam applicators from Tim Holtz or something that works too um, and I just go around and I ink ink my edges I also like to ink the edges of my chipboard because once you glue on the base, um, you can sometimes see the little bit of the brown chipboard color or so I also just ink these two um, while I'm at it. So once you have your edges inked, the next step is to take a glue and you're going to want some sort of wet adhesive type glue. I 
really like to use um, tacky glue by Eileen's. Um, so whatever works for you, or whatever type of glue is your favorite, go ahead and use that. And so what I will do is just glue down Put some glue on the back. Make sure I get a little bit on the handle. And so I'm just going to glue that on top of the chipboard. And the reason why I do the chipboard, even though this is fairly sturdy um, paper, I just like the extra stability of the chipboard um, behind it. And then I'm going to take a, the coordinating paper and glue that down. And I just glue the little top back on the teapot. And so now I have, have a real basic teapot decorated. I'm just going to do this one real quick also. So again, you have um, two little completed teapots, real basic. And then the next step is going to be to decorate these. And so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to turn the camera off and go ahead and put the rest of my little teapots together exactly like this. And then if you want to see how I do the next step in decorating, just um, stick around and I will decorate a few teapots with you guys. Okay, I'm back and I have completed all of the little die cuts that I cut out, um, gluing all the pieces onto the chipboard and inking my edges. And now comes the fun part of decorating and for this part I really encourage you guys to shop your stash see what you have available um, in your own stash before you go out and buy anything so look for um, ribbons and trims and punches that with flowers on them and dif just different things like that some bling those kind of things to decorate and I'll show you how I plan on decorating a few of these things and by no, no means does that mean you have to decorate yours exactly the same way, but um, just to give you some ideas. So I'm just going to grab one of these um, little teapots that I've already done, and I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see it a little bit better here. And so now we're going to start decorating. And so one of the things in my stash that I have a little bit of is some of these flat back pearls right here. And I have a few that I... Um, had cut and used for some other projects left over and these ones actually fit pretty good on my little teapot here. So here's where I would probably put these. And again you'll need some sort of glue. Um, and so I think I'm going to run with this little idea right here because I like the look of that to begin with for this one. And you can either use a hot glue gun or some other type of glue that you like to use. Um, for this, I'm just going to use, I have this Ultimate Crafter's Pick glue, and I like this glue. It is kind of like super glue, but it, it adheres to metal, plastic, glass, and more, and it dry, does dry clear. And it is pretty permanent. I've used this before, and I do like it. Um, you just have to be patient enough to let it dry. So I'm just adding a little glue on the back of it. And I'm going to just set it there down. So I could just leave it like that. It does look cute that way. Um, but I am going to add one little embellishment up to the top. I do like to add flat back pearls. So I have a little sheet of these flat back pearls and they are sticky on the back sides. But again, um, I've had these flat back pearls fall off off of projects. So I'm going to use, I like to use glossy accents to glue them down a little bit better. Um, it makes it a little more permanent and then I don't run into any issues long term for um, not having my flat back pearls stick. So I'm going to take one off of my little sheet here. And 
and hopefully I'm going to just um, clean out the top just to make sure that it's cleaned all the way so that my glue runs smoothly. And so I'm just going to put just a little dab of the glue right here on the top. That um, crafter's pick glue would have worked also, um, but it comes out a little heavy. And so I just choose to use the glossy accents for that reason. And so there is my first completed little teapot. I like the way this one looks, so I'm not going to do anything else to it. So for this one, I'm going to choose some sort of trim to run across here. The last time I used those flat back pearls. And I have a couple different things sitting here. I have um, this trim that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. That would work really good. Um, I have some little crochet trim that I'm not quite sure where I got it. It's just kind of in my little scrap bag. And then I also um, have sitting on here, I do have some like bling, but it's not the right color, but that would be a, another idea that you could use. I do have some sequin trim like this that would probably work, but again, I don't think that's the look I'm going for, so I'm going to not use that. You could also use some bead trim and use that across right here. You could also use, um, let's see what else do I have sitting on my stash. I do have some little rickrack trim, which we still might do something with that one yet. Um, but for now, I think I'm just going to stick with this Hobby Lobby trim. And again, when you're picking out trim or bling or whatever you want to put on here, the only recommendation that I have, of course, is finding some sort of trim that matches what you're working on but also to think about the size because the size does matter this one's a little bit smaller and it does say on the container that it is three-eighths of an inch um, wide so I think that fits pretty good across here now I do have this other trim that would probably look lovely on a big teapot but I don't know if you were to use it on this little teapot it would probably overpower it quite a bit and not look as nice so um, when you're picking out different stuff from your stash if you're working with a smaller size teapot make sure you can keep that in mind for whatever you decide to put on it so I have a little scrap piece left from another project so I'm just going to cut this one to size to put on here pretty close to the right size so I'm just going to snip it right there And I'm going to glue that down. Um, you could also use some sort of like flat ribbon also. Um, I don't have any blue out, but I do have some pink sitting here for my stash. That would have worked also for putting across here. Um, it would have looked nice. And I probably will use that trim on some of the pink teapots that I cut. And then the next step is to glue it down. Again, I could use that this ultimate glue um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use my tacky glue because this glue is cheaper and so I do use this a lot in my junk journals when I glue down trim and stuff and I don't have any issues with it so usually when in doubt I kinda go with um, the tacky glue just because it is cheaper and um, I like to use that for as many things as I possibly can because of cost reasons and then I save my better glues for um, for other areas. So I just glued that one down. Right there. And so now I'm going to decorate it a little bit more because it looks kind of kind of blah to me. I am again going to um, glue a little flat back pearl up in the top of my little teapot. And I'm going to again do it the exact same way with my glossy accents. And now I also want to add some sort of flower or something to add a little more interest to this one. Um, so you can do a couple different things. You can punch out some flowers or I could add um, like a little wild orchid craft flower right there. You can also find like small, small little flowers that you buy, paper flowers in the store. These are some Prima ones I had in my stash. Um, they all would work really nice there. And so for this one, I just punched out some flowers um, with some scrap paper. 
And so I'm going to show you guys, because I have had people ask too in the past how I make my flat flowers have a little bit more um, dimension to them. So I will show you guys that real quick on one of these flowers here. And the first thing I like to do if I, um, this is kind of an off-white or a cream color flower, is I do like to, again, take my ink that I used on my teapot, and I'm just going to add just a little bit of color to, to this flower petal here. Um, again, that's, that's optional. I just like the look of it, so to me it just kind of blends, blends in nice and it'll make, make it match the, match it better. And I'm just going to do that on, ink my edges on both sides. And if you want, you can put a little bit in the middle, um, but I'll probably end up putting a flat back pearl in the middle, so I'm not really too concerned about that. So what you will need now is some sort of stylus tool. And there are ones out there that you can buy that are for flower making. And so here's one brand that I have from McGill. And they do have different sizes on each end, like here's three millimeters and two millimeters. And you can see they have different little ball heads on the side. So these bigger ones, like this eight millimeter one, you would use on a larger flower. And since this is a pretty small flower, I'm gonna use this three millimeter size right here. And again, it does say it um, right here on the side of my little tool. Um, but I, what I like to do is just kind of turn my flower over and I'm just gonna kind of, what it's called, cupping it. I'm just gonna go like this and rub Hopefully, um, I'm, the black just doesn't show up very well on the camera. Um, but you do need some sort of foam behind it to give it a little give. So I'm just rubbing it and cupping it on the back side here. So I'll just hold it in my hand and kind of show you what my motions are just so that you might be able to see better. So I'm taking the little ball head right here and I'm just rubbing it in like this. And then I do the same thing on each little flower petal. So that's what I'm doing. And so after I'm kind of happy with that, I'm gonna turn my flower over and then I'm gonna press in and press down. So then I get this little um, 3D looking flower. So I'll try to tip it on its side here so you can maybe see a little bit better. Um, that it is now instead of being flat like this one it has a little bit of dimension to it and so I also like um, to add a little bit of greenery behind my flower so I do have a punch um, where I punched out some little green pieces and so here was this the punch this is a Martha Stewart punch I don't know if you can still find it or not. And that little flower punch that I use for these ones is is from EK Success, if you guys are interested. And so this, of course, is a little bit big, too big of a piece if I were to layer my flower on there and then put it on the teapot that way. Um, it might work, actually. Um, it's not too bad. but I am gonna cut off just a little bit of it. And so I just do that by cutting a little piece of it there. So I'm, I'm gonna go just back to working on this mat right here. <coughs> Excuse me. And so I am gonna glue this, um, glue this little piece down right here like that. And I'll stick a flat back pearl in it. So again, I'm just gonna use my Eileen's Tacky Glue I'm just going to put a little glue on the back side of this little piece of greenery. And I'm going to glue it in the corner wherever I want. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with the back of this flower. Just put a little bit of glue. Um, the other thing you can do is if your glue is kind of runny, um, you can just put glue off to the side on a scrap piece of like plastic or something and then use a toothpick to um, pick up your glue. That works really good too. If your glue is kind of messy, you can do it that way too. And so I'm just pressing down my flower on top of that 
little trim that we glued down. And so, so far, here's what my little embellishment looks like. I do like it. And again, I'm going to stick some sort of um, flat back pearl in the middle of it. And so I could stick these exact same sheets, or I do have a couple of these really small blue ones left. So I'm thinking I'm going to stick one of these little blue ones in the middle, um, just because I want to use up some of these. And so I'm just going to again stick my glossy accents right in the middle of the flower. And glue down um, these little plastic things. I haven't had much luck with gluing these plastic. I'm um, using the tacky glue with these little plastic flat back pearls. It just they just don't seem to stick. That's why you want to choose some sort of glue that's meant to work with um, plastic pieces. So the glossy accents or that ultimate crafters pick glue works good um, with plastic. And so right here, what I'm doing is I'm just picking up a little bit of that excess glue that came out of here just because I don't like that look. So um, I'm just cleaning it up just a little bit. And so it will take a little bit for this to dry. Um, so I will set it aside and go ahead and start decorating another little teapot. I'm going to take another teapot and we're just going to decorate it using one of those Wild Orchid Crafts flowers. I think this time I might try um, and look and see kind of what maybe some rickrack looks like on my little teapot here. I currently don't have any of the right color blue in my stash. Um, I have a really bright colored blue rickrack like this, this one, but I think that's a little too bright blue for for this teapot, but I think this little cream colored one would work good. So I am going to just cut that off. Um, and again, I'm just going to use a little bit of the tacky glue to glue it down. And I'm just going to press down. And then what I like to do sometimes if my glue's leaking over is I'll just take a clean paper towel and I'll just dab at it. You don't want to rub because then that moves your glue around. But if you just dab, it should pick up the little bit of excess glue. And then I'll just find another clean spot on here and then just do it one more time. And I'm just dabbing down and it picks up my little excess glue. And so... Um, so that's how that one looks so far. And again, I like to put the flat back pearls on the top. Um, for this one, I'm just going to stick one of those little blue ones on the top. So again, that would be kind of cute. I could just leave it as is, but I'm going to stick one of those little wild orchid craft flowers on here. And I do have a couple. Again, size does matter because um, I do have some really cute ones that are, but they're really big or bigger size. These ones I really like the color and I think that they would look really nice, but I think that they're almost, you know, that one maybe would work, but it seems a little too big for me. So I do have some of these little um, like two-tone ones that I think I'm just going to stick that one on here. And I do like the look of that. Um, I could take it a step further if I wanted to and <clears throat> add some sort of little string of pearls or something right there, which I do like that look. So that's what I think I'm going to do. So I just cut off my little flower here. So I just have a flower and then the pearls. These are a little bit long, so I probably will end up trimming them a little bit, but I'll do that after I get it glued down. And again, I would use, if you're patient and you want to hold it, um, I would go ahead and use the ultimate glue because this, again, works really well with kind of 3D objects. Um, but since it is 3D and I want to make this go fast on the camera, I did plug in my hot glue gun here, so I'm going to use that. So I'm going to take my... Um, hot glue gun and I'm just going to put a little bit of dab of glue right here and 
And I'm going to stick my little pearls in there. And then again, I'm going to take my hot glue and I'm going to glue the back of my flower. and place it and so I will just trim off just a little bit off the bottom the pearls there just so that they're not so long and if you wanted to you could add a couple more flowers to this um, so I am going to glue a couple more flowers to it because I did like how that looked you can just leave it as one if you guys want or add a few more and make kind of a little cluster. <clears throat> so now I kind of created a little bit of a cluster there. And I still think that my little beads are a little long here, so I'm going to cut a little bit more off. So that's what that one looks like. So now um, this will be the fourth one we've decorated. I'm going to take some, some twine. And then I also have this little punch right here that... It's from McGill and it creates different sizes tags and so I do have some tags in my stash that are that size right there so I did cut out some of these tags already and I inked the edges with the blue ink the same blue ink I used on here and so I am going to take the twine and I'm just going to wrap it around um, wrap it around a couple of times on the teapot and I'm just going to tie a little knot here And stick the stick the tag on at the same time while I'm tying the knot here. And then I'll just cut off a little bit of the excess twine. And so I have a little tag now hanging off of my teapot. And if you had like some sort of sentiment that you wanted to cut out or put on there, you could very easily do that. Or I'm just going to leave this one blank because maybe if I use it on a card or something for somebody, I might just actually write their name on there. But um, on this one, I think I'm going to add a little bit of a flower or something right there because it seems kind of plain to me. I think I'm just going to take another one of these little wild orchid craft flowers and or the paper roses and just stick it on there. And since I have my hot glue gun turned on, I'm going to just glue it down again using the hot glue gun. And so I'll just stick the little flower right there. So I think that's really cute too. Um, so that's how that one looks and I'm going to stick a, another little embellishment on the, or flat back pearl on the back top of that one too. So that's what that one looks like. Um, and so let's decorate one more together. And this time I am using, going to decorate um, not only the little separation between the two on the top and the bottom I'll again stick some sort of trim down I'm going to add a little embellishment to the middle of it and decorate it like that and so for these you can use if you have a really small die cut or a punch and so I'm using this punch and this punch is from EK success and it's one of those three-in-one punches so if I put it on this this last one it'll punch out a couple different pieces but the middle piece is this size and again, I inked my edges the blue color, um, but I think I'm just going to glue down some more of that rickrack um, just because I have so much of it and I'm trying to um, make a dent in it, I guess. So I'm going to glue that again up here. So 
So I'm going to glue this little piece down also. Okay, so now you can decorate the inside of that piece. Um, again, you could add some sort of flower to it if you wanted. Um, sometimes you can buy the little cabochons um, in different colors. This one's a white one, so I probably, you know, I could glue it on there, but the white and the white just doesn't do it for me. Um, but I do have these really cute little... Um, they're flat back hearts stickers and so um, I am going to put one of those on there because I think that's kind of cute right there. Um, so I'll just glue one of these little pink ones down in the middle. And again I'm just going to stick a little glossy accents on it just because I don't trust um, the adhesive on the backs of these. You know, you have to be a little patient to let the glossy accents dry, but in the long run, it'll be nice um, just because it'll stick then. And so again, I'm going to decorate. I'm just going to add another little um, flat back pearl to the top of this one. So that's what that one looks like completed. And if you wanted to, you could still add another flower. Um, and then the only other idea that I have um, for decorating, and you can do this to pretty much any of the ones that we've already decorated. So like here, I've already decorated this one. This was like one of the first ones I decorated or the second one. Is you can take um, like those Tim Holtz stickers, um, word stickers, or I actually um, just type up words on pieces of paper. And so like I have this word believe or dream and you can like hang the word off of there, which I think is kind of cute sometimes. So I'm just going to cut out this word. Um, you could also cut out words from book pages too. Um, so I'm just going to cut this word out. And again, I'm going to ink, um, ink the edges of it just because I like that look. That doesn't mean you have to do it, but... And then you can glue this little word right here um, and hang it down from underneath there. And I like that that look. So again, I'm just going to take a little bit of my tacky glue. And I'm just going to glue it underneath, underneath there. And so that was another idea. Of course, you know, you guys, the, the possibilities are endless. You can do all sorts of different things to these little teapots to decorate them. Um, but those are just a couple ideas that I had and with stuff available in my stash. But hopefully, if you guys decide to make some, um, just use what you have and take this idea and run with it and make it your own. Um, here are the five little um, teapots that we decorated, and I hope you guys learned a little something today watching this tutorial, or at least came away with some ideas on how to decorate some of your own embellishments. Um, thanks, you guys, so much for watching, and if you liked what you watched today, please give this video a thumbs up, and leave a comment, and of co course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, um, just so you don't miss out on any future tutorials and project shares. Um, thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.